Hi everyone, Rebecca the Frugal Resinista here and I'm super excited to show you guys what I am working on today. Today we are working on um, a whole new kind of thing. This is not my idea. I saw this um, from Crystal Ma who has her own YouTube channel and I will definitely link you to that. Um, she's amazing. I don't usually um, use canvases this cheap, even though we're being frugal. This is a dollar store canvas, and I'm not even exactly sure what size it is. I don't know, like a some weird like five by seven. I'm not even sure if it's quite five by seven. But anyway, I've painted it black with Walmart um, Craft Essentials paint. I think these are about three dollars. And um, the reason I'm using such a tiny canvas and such a cheap canvas <laughs> is that um, this new technique I'm doing gets a little tricky. I've tried it a couple times off camera and I think I'm getting the hang of it to make it look really nice, but, um, or at least to make it look good enough that you guys will get the concept. <laughs> but um, the first thing we're going to do is tape this off. This one, as opposed to all the other things I do where I like texture and things, this one's going to be um, a flat surface and I'm going to try to dome it a little bit. If you don't know much about resin, um, when you first pour resin into something, the edges naturally come up against, against what you've got it inside. And so when you tape, um, they'll come up and then when you take the tape off, you have sharp edges. So what I'm going to do is I am going to tape around this, but only give myself like a quarter of an inch so that my resin will go all the way to the top of it by the time I'm on the last pour. And then doming stands for, or refers to um, when you keep putting resin in before the surface tension breaks, it gets more and more full and actually almost goes up a little bit before any of it leaks over the sides. And that's the tricky part with that is um, trying to do it without putting too much in and leaking it. So let's speed it up and I will talk more when we're done. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is um, go ahead and do the first resin pour, and it's going to be in black. And so I am going to prepare that and come back to you. My resin is mixed, and as I said, I am going to add a little more of this black craft paint that I use to paint this right into the resin. And um, as I usually do, I'm using Stone Coat Countertops Quick Coat, um, and so I don't have a ton of working time, but that is great for this project because um, this takes um, at least three pours to finish. So um, I'll be able to wait like half an hour, 40 minutes, and then do the next pour so I can get it all done in a day at least. So this is going to go over the entire canvas. Um, if you guys are doing this one, I would definitely prop your canvas with something. If this canvas was any bigger, what I usually do is stack a couple tiles, um, just like white kitchen tiles um, that I got at Home Depot. If it's a bigger one, I'll use some that are um, like the six by six tiles. And if it's small, I'll just use the little tiny ones. But um, that's a quick and easy way. A lot of the canvases, two tiles is about the exact same um, height as underneath. But this one's so tiny, <laughs> I don't have anything to fit in it, but it's okay. It's just a little one and I'm just testing this to show you guys. So what crystals um, video is, is she showed how to create a fire opal. Um, and I'm super excited about it. And I've been messing with it the last couple days, just kind of taking her idea and trying different things with it. And I've discovered a few things. I've had some mixed results. So hopefully, now that I'm doing this for you guys, it'll turn out okay. <laughs> All right, my black is covering my canvas, and I have hit it with my blowtorch to get rid of all the bubbles. And what we're going to be making today is an opal, and I'm super excited about it. This is the product I'm using. It is um, iridescent, like kind of rainbowy um, cellophane paper. And so I couldn't find this just at like Target or anywhere um, because they had a lot of clear, but I didn't find the shiny kind. So I got this at a party city. But if you guys don't have a party city near you, um, I will definitely um, put a link to getting it online in the comment section. Um, but all we're going to do is actually lay this in and get it nice and wet. And if you don't like touching resin, this is not going to be your thing because 
I don't love it and it's been a mess, but this turns out so cool it's worth it. So you get it all wet and then you're going to kind of just mush it around until it gets all wrinkled. And I don't know if you can tell, but when you're holding it up and when it's like above this, um, above my silicone mat, it looks pink. And then when you put it above the black, it looks like a bluish green. Um, it will change based on what colors you have with it. So what I'm going to do is put, um, right now I'm putting it on top of the black. And then when this part dries, I am going to put, um, like an opaque white on it. I'm going to use clear and just a teeny bit of white in my clear because I don't want it to be, um, I don't want it to be too dark because I want to be able to see this through it, but, um, it's going to, it's going to look really neat. So let me get these all on and then we will keep moving. Okay. So that's in there. I'm going to let it sit for just a few minutes so it gets tacky but I'm not going to have it um, dry totally because I still want to move it around a little bit. Um, and I'm going to mix up my next color of resin to pour on top. My next layer of resin is mixed and I'm going to do a couple of things with it. I'm adding some stone coat countertops white glitter. They were having a sale one time, or no, a special from another YouTuber. And so um, it was a big percentage off. So what I did was I um, got my resin and I got some different glitters and things in that one. So I'm adding that into this and what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to add a white. Now I've tried this a few times. The white becomes really opaque really fast and I don't want it to cover up the color but then at the same time I want enough in it that I can um, make it look pink in some places. The black is going to show the green and the blue and then adding some white on top will show the pink and the other things and that that's what I'll give it the opal look that I'm going for. So um, what I'm going to do is add a teeny tiny bit and then pour and then go back and add a teeny bit more so that it's got different um, dimensions in it. But I'm literally adding one drop of white paint. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to start with that. And already that has given me um, quite a lot of color. So I'm going to pour some of this around here and then I'll add one more drop and pour more and then uh, move it all around and try to smash um, all of the cellophane down into the resin. great. I'm going to let this harden for a while. The one thing is that um, a few of these just keep popping up. So what I tried when I did a practice round of this was I grabbed a couple of my silicone molds that are used for completely different things, knowing that um, once the resin hardens, they'll peel right off. So I um, just gently did this. I just sat them on top to hold things down a little bit. So I'm going to do that again. Um, there's just these couple little spots that don't want to don't want to lay down, and I need them to lay down because they have to be underneath the resin all the way. Um, so we're going to let this all sit, and once it's significantly stickier, um, probably in a half an hour or so, I'll come back and I'll show you the next part. All right, my resin is dry, and I took off the mold that I had sitting here that was silicone. Um, you can see that just in a couple spots, the um, the uh, resin dried a little thinner. So when I pour this next layer, I'm just going to pour carefully into there to make sure that it gets into all the holes. Um, clearly by my shirt, I keep telling you guys, I'll be back in an hour, I'll be back in two hours, and it's the next day because that's how life happens. So um, I'm going to tell you what I'm using real quick. Um, you guys probably know by now if you've been watching that I really like Tester's brand um, enamel paint. This is used for model airplanes and things like that so you'll find it in if you go to a craft store in the section with the models. But um, today I'm using copper and I'm using metallic red. Copper is going to be its own color on here 
and I mixed copper and metallic red in the other because I don't want it to be a bright red, but I want to have two distinct colors just to add some depth and make it look nice. So what we're going to do first is pour clear. Um, I've got my two cups ready and I'm going to mix them together and pour clear all over this, almost to the point where it's over the edge of the tape. I'm going to stop a little short and then do this little bit of metallic pour. And then if I still need to add more, I'll add a little more clear. Um, so again, as always, I'm gonna speed this up. And then at the end, I'll give you a few things that I did and talk about it and we'll keep going. So just a couple things to note. First of all, this is so fabulous. I love doing these. Um, so the copper and red just really makes it look like stone inside with the um, opal like coming through. It's so cool. I'm not sure how well you can see it in the sped up version, but if you're like, oh my word, did she just catch that on fire? Yes, I did. And I did it on purpose because I like the way that the resin spreads really fast, or I'm sorry, the resin with the enamel paint spreads really fast. Um, and breaks up rather than just being kind of along these edges this like solid color um, So I did it on purpose, but if you guys are gonna do something like that take some precautions Even though this um, stone coat countertop resin is okay to inhale I don't know that you should be burning paint and inhaling it. So for this part Crack a window get a fan going something so that you don't breathe that in so I've kind of got I don't know if you can hear it I've got a little bit of sound going in the background of fan and stuff, but um Anyway, I'm super excited about how this turned out. Um, I'll try to get you guys close-ups when we're done so that you can see it a little better. But we're going to let this dry and then I will show you how I do the edges. It has been a couple hours now and this has dried and hardened. Um, and I just peeled off the um, painter's tape. And so the next step I'm going to do is use another color of this Tester's enamel paint. This one is metallic black. And I am just going to go around my edges because some of my color peeled off. Even if it hadn't, I would have gone over my edges again because I want a shinier look. I did get a tiny bit of tape that stuck. I mean, that just happens sometimes. I'm not too worried about it. But um, we'll speed this up. I'll put that on and then we'll move on to the next steps. you guys we're getting close to the end this is dry on the edges and the next step that I'm gonna do maybe you can see this up close a little better it looks really cool I'm really happy with how it turned out um, the last step we're gonna do is that typically we want to stick you know all of our um, glass and cool crystals and everything into the center of our geodes well this time I don't want to skip that because as beautiful as this is I feel like it's still plain and I want to give it a little bit of pop but the whole point was to have this pretty smooth surface and to be able to see the opal through the um, like stone kind of look. So what I'm going to do is wrap this in the glass. So it's almost a reverse geode. Um, so I am using my $3 gold um, glass that I got from Dollar General. And then my Michael's mirror glass that's crushed. Um, and that one was a little more, but usually 40% off coupons. What I've done is I've taken that same mold that I used to smash this down while it was drying and I've filled it with these two types and just mixed them together. It just makes it a little easier for me to stick things on. I purposely didn't put these in the resin because I wanted that flat look. So I'm going to just kind of build um, 
build the glass kind of up at different angles around the edges. Um, so I will be starting with my glue gun to stick some of that on. And then um, from there, I'm gonna just paint some resin onto it so that it'll stick everything down. But I don't wanna pour, because if I have glass sitting around here somewhere, I don't want the resin to start creeping into the middle and make a weird bump. So we'll definitely stick stuff down first, and then I will paint it on really carefully. Um, as always, I'm gonna speed this up, and we're almost to the end of the video. guys um I have that in fast forward for you but holy cow that was an exercise in patience for me that kind of took forever <laughs> but I think it looks pretty good um I am going to mix some resin and like I said paint it on and because obviously I can't leave well enough alone I think I might add one more top coat um of clear over this whole thing there were a couple of bumps I did my best originally but um just in a few spots, I can, as I was turning this, I could see some spots that I didn't love. So I think I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more tape in this couple little spots. Um, one other note, sorry, add the tape and then do one more pour. Um, on another note here, I wasn't gonna go all the way across with this on the bottom, but realized partway through that um, if someone wants to put this on a stand rather than hang it, um, the bottom was not even if I only went part way. So I went the rest of the way through just to make sure that if somebody had a stand, it would sit evenly. Um, so yeah, those are just a couple thoughts. So um, I'm going to mix some resin and we're going to finish this thing. All right, we are on the last step. I'm super excited. I am going to mix one more set of resin and um, pour over the top. And after all this time of worrying about that tape and not spilling over, and then deciding I wanted to knock some of that off and spilling over and back and forth. Um, I'm going to pour and let this spill over. <laughs> so my black um, looks great on the sides, but I'm going to just let it get shiny. And so I'm going to pour the top first because I'm using quick coat. Um, I need to make sure that I don't take too much time because if I pour and then pour again in a little bit, sometimes you can see where you poured the second time, you can kind of see waves in this, and that's what happened. So I want this to be really smooth. 
So I'm going to focus really hard on the whole top surface first so it's glassy smooth. And then I'm still going to go back with my stick and make sure I stick down all these side edges. I saved my used cups. Um, obviously I used these a while ago. There's part of a stir stick broken off in that one. Um, sometimes I'll take these discs out and turn them into jewelry. That'll be a video someday, but jewelry is tiny and I don't have a lot of patience for it. Um, but I have so many of these that I use them to prop up my canvas. So since I'm going to let this drip, I'm going to put it on that. I did go ahead and tape this again because I don't want resin drips to be on the bottom of my painting. So once it dries, you can just peel the tape right off and then um, even if it's dripped over, it won't stay in big drips on the bottom of your canvas. So we're going to finish this up. I always love this stage and then also get a little sad at this stage <laughs> because I think when you're making art, you kind of put your heart into it and you put your um, energy and just, just what you find beautiful into it. And so I get a little sad when I think... Okay, this is going to be done and I'm not going to work with this one anymore. But at the same time, it's exciting because you get to see your final product and um, that's really special too to see what you've created. And you know, I really appreciate those of you guys who have um, sent me messages showing me what you've worked on because I think, I think that doing art takes bravery. Um, when I very first started this, I was too scared to show anybody and I made art for about a year before letting anyone see that I was doing it and um, took it to a craft show that didn't really have anything to do with more ni nice art. It was more just like fun crafts and I just stuck a couple paintings in the back of my booth. Um, scared that people would be like, oh gosh, what did you make? And it was so, it was just so special to hear people say, wow, I hope you um, start selling these. These are great. These are wonderful. And it gave me the courage to start doing more with my art. And so I hope that you guys, as you are practicing and doing some of the things that I'm doing, you find courage in that too, because, um, you know, worrying about like if your art looks good enough and things like that, there's no such thing as if your art looks good enough or not. Um, I feel like the beauty of art comes in your bravery and trying to make something. And then at the end, getting to stand back and see that you created something with your own two hands. And um, just the fact that you're you and that we're all unique individuals and that um, you won't ever make the same piece of art twice makes it just intrinsically beautiful. And so um, this one, you know, I've got some things on here that don't look perfect. And I also um, have, this is my third take on this because I really messed it up a few times, but it those times that I felt like I messed up, even on this one, um, were some great learning experiences for like what I should try next time. And so I feel like this one now is looking great. So those other ones were really valuable because I wouldn't have known what to do if I hadn't made those mistakes and tried some other things. So not to get all philosophical on you guys, but um, I just really appreciate that you guys are making things and not just watching, but doing them on your own because that is super awesome. So um, enough chatting. I will <laughs> speed this up and I'm going to just make this level, let it pour over the edges and hit it with my blowtorch. Um, um, then I'm going to go back and mix a tiny bit more resin and paint it into the stone.
excited about this. I'm going to let this dry overnight and then tomorrow I'll take a couple photos of it so that you guys can see it in better lighting because my studio space is never the best lighting. Um, but thank you for sticking with me again on another video. You guys are fabulous and I appreciate all the comments I've been getting. Um, as always, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram as The Frugal Resinista. And I appreciate you watching. If you had fun watching, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.